Hey everyone, Fuse Mike coming at ya. In part one, we took a look at how you can develop your own custom NFT, get that deployed to a testnet, for example, and have that live and interact with it through Remix. So this part two, we're gonna be taking that next step and then from a client or a game in this case, how can you actually interact with the blockchain, read the state, and then also go ahead and leverage that fact to say, view your NFTs within Unity. If you have more specific questions about functions or ideas that you'd like to see implemented when it comes to NFTs, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And broadly, if you have any questions or want to join the rest of the community, head over to our Discord page where you can chat and interact with all of us. This is that smart contract we took a look at from last week. You can see that it is indeed here uh, from MetaMask. I went ahead and made a copy of this and deployed it on Robston just because I happen to have a Robston URL from Infura. But you can, of course, use RinkB on an Infura within Unity to interact with the blockchain in a decentralized free manner. But in this specific case, we're going to be taking a look at the Robston network. You can see here, here's our smart contract that we have deployed from last time. And I've actually gone ahead and in this case, gone through and set up three different YouTube IDs onto our smart contract here for us to play around with. I'll go ahead and leave the public address for the smart contract overlaid on the video here. And it's just, uh, it'll be copy and pasteable from the description as well. So. You have your smart contract deployed, or in this case, you want to use the smart contract we have. First thing you want to go ahead and do is get a copy of the ABI. So that we did this in our ERC20 video. It's the same process as that video. So if you want another explanation of that, you can check out that video. Copy the ABI, and you'll need to have Visual Studio Code installed to follow along with this. Visual Studio Code has an extension through Solidity that has been developed by the Ethereum team to allow you to have that integration that converts a ABI that is typically in JSON, as you can see here. And here's the ABI we copied and pasted. Convert this into a C-sharp friendly format. So the way that's done, once you have Visual Studio Code installed and you have the Solidity extension installed, is to simply right-click and then create a C-sharp contract definition. That will take a couple seconds for it to do the creation, but once that's done, within your project in Visual Studio Code, you'll now see this folder with a contract definition. This, we're not really interested in the services here, we're specifically interested in the definition component. And then quite frankly, it's just a copy and paste of this definition into a Unity project. Speaking of Unity, it's about time we, we take a look at that. You want to go ahead and clone this project here. It's the Unity 3D Sample Net 461, and you'll need at least Unity version 2020.3. Both of those are requirements that will serve as the basis for our integration with the blockchain. Hopping into Unity, I have our quick example of NFT. I'm just going to go ahead and run this scene that just shows exactly what's happening. You can see here, this is querying the blockchain and actually validating the fact that we are uh, owners of these NFTs and then displaying them accordingly within Unity. So these are the three NFTs that were created as part of the smart contract that we deployed and we were able to hook into that. You can see here, I just have the basis for everything that we need. It, it's really simple. And again, if you're interested in any of this code, a lot of this, quite frankly, is copy and paste of the uh, specific code that is located here as part of the uh, readme file. So you can go ahead and copy and paste most of that. And, and for our purposes, right now we're just reading from the blockchain. You can use similar processes for writing to the blockchain. You can see that definition that I've copied and pasted in already to save us a little bit of time. And I have two functions here that we'll go ahead and pop open and take a look at. Again, nothing terribly fancy that's going on here. First thing we'll take a look at is this NFT contract. It's just a static class that we're, we're leveraging here. And just like in our ERC20 video, there are four core pillars to interact and leverage Ethereum within Unity. 
So first thing is you're gonna need an Infra URL. I've covered that multiple times in the past, but it's really as easy as going to infra.io, signing up for an account, and then creating a URL that you can go ahead and interact with. So just make sure that you are using the correct URL for the specific blockchain that you wanna interact with. In our case, we're using Robston. Next, you're gonna go ahead and put in a public key associated with your Ethereum account. So you can get this off of MetaMask since we've gone ahead and done that deployment. Then you'll need the smart contract address that you wanna interact with. So in this case here, this is the address that we're gonna be interacting with that's been deployed on Robston. If you're doing any written transactions to the blockchain, you're gonna to wanna to have a private key associated with that and that private key needs to match the public key. In our ERC-20 video, which I believe I also have the same script here, I showed an example of how you can write to the blockchain. And it's very similar to reading from the blockchain. You just kind of set the functions you wanna use. You have to use this use legacy as default, and then you just listen in for a transaction. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that since we're just reading if someone owns an NFT and then displaying that. So that is all the requirements once you have those requirements, it's two functions here, again, copied and pasted pretty much. Uh, you have to pull in the contract definition that you have associated with the contract that you pulled off of Visual Studio Code. So this is the NFT contract definition. And then you have all of these functions that are available as part of your smart contract. And they align exactly to all of the functions that you defined in your smart contract and are part of your ABI. So you can see here for getting the URI field from the smart contract, there's a URI function, which if we go back into our remix, that's this URI function right here. Similarly, for our get IDs field, we're gonna be calling the get all tokens function we wrote last time. So that's this function right here. We have an address that's associated with that. You can see we're passing in an account for that address. Similarly here for the URI, it requires a token ID. So we pass in the token ID here. And that's it. These are coroutines. So you have to, you just like in any client server relationship, you have to wait for the blockchain to respond. So you just yield on a result. But once you do, you can output that out. And as a I enumerator function, we need to have a listener callback that's associated here. So that's all we're doing is just passing that output back to whoever called it. And that's, that's really it to start interacting with your smart contract. There's really nothing fancy. You're just using the, the syntax that an Ethereum needs to make your smart contract calls. And in this case, because the read calls, we don't even have to worry about providing a private key and writing to a blockchain. Then we just have to put that all together. So that's what this mono behavior here for the, the component for setting the YouTube thumbnails and creating them all is, is doing. So on start, what we're doing is we are just getting all of the IDs, saving that to a list. Then we go through and we have to get the URLs associated with that and then display them out as quads. So once we have the IDs, we can then just quickly go through and iterate. And in this case here, you can see here, we got the IDs, we have a list for our URLs, and then we're iterating over the IDs to get the URI associated with that. Once you have the URI, we go ahead and create a quad that we dynamically generate. That then goes ahead and downloads the image so based on that URL, so very simple right there, and sets the texture. That's it, nothing fancy that that's really going on here. That URL, it could literally live anywhere. It's, again, defined here in Remix what exactly that URL needs to look like. And that really just serves as the basis for, for what we need. If you are interested in the code, I'm happy to put that out as a gist, but quite frankly, I think it's, it's very simple to actually iterate and start building out projects like this. If we actually go ahead and let's hop back here and let's go to our deployed contract. So we can also test to make sure this is actually based on ownership. So I've gone ahead here, set up a batch transfer, uh, which is really just gonna be transferring the token from 
our original address that we deployed the smart contract onto to this like dummy account that I have set up here uh, as this unity test. So I'm gonna switch back to my MetaMask dummy and which is where we're sending it from. And then let's go ahead and click transact. That's gonna go ahead and start that transfer from our initial address to the, the second one and send over ID two. We could send more than one, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm to send the second value from the, the, the blockchain. So I believe ID two was associated with this VR multiplayer. So let's go ahead and wait for that to transact. You can see the current state is I own all three. So once MetaMask comes back with a approved transaction here, we'll see it's pending. We can try this out again. Okay, there's our confirmation. I'm gonna go ahead, pause or turn it off. Let's go ahead, click play again. And there you have it. Because I've gone ahead and transferred this to a different account, I no longer own that NFT, so it doesn't show up here. So this is just showing me the NFTs that I own. I think that about does it for NFTs. We'll look at the similar procedure in our next week's video around render streaming. So you'll be able to dynamically display NFTs, which I think will be really interesting. And also curious to know if there are questions around NFTs or other custom functionality you'd like to see. I'd love to hear that down in the comments below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.